If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Share it with a friend and I'll be doing more videos like this just for you. Looking back to the task given to you last time, you were asked to recreate the distribution of recorded earthquake epicenters, volcanoes, and mountain belts into the map provided. And you were asked to mark also the approximate location of earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain belts from the other map into this map. And you were reminded to use different colors of ink for each to distinguish among earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain belts. Your output most likely will look like this. If you look into the map, there is a legend on the top portion of it. The gray color represents those are plate boundaries. The yellow color indicates that the volcanoes are on that area. The red color indicates that that is the earthquake epicenters. And the white color are the mountain belts. Based from the result of your work in Task 1, you were asked to evaluate which of these observations were you able to see. All you need to do is to put check mark if you agree and X mark if you disagree. Earthquakes are likely to happen far away from volcanoes. Agree or disagree? The answer is disagree because most earthquakes are along the edges of tectonic plates, and this is also where volcanoes are found. Most volcanoes are near or along the tectonic plate boundaries. Agree or disagree? The answer is agree because most of the volcanoes and earthquake epicenters are found at the tectonic plate boundaries. The mountain belts are at the center of the tectonic plates. Agree or disagree? The correct answer is disagree because most of the mountain belts are located along the tectonic plate boundaries. Epicenters of earthquake are randomly distributed. They do not form a pattern. Agree or disagree? correct answer is disagree because the location of the earthquake epicenters are not randomly distributed over the Earth's surface and most earthquake epicenters are concentrated in a narrow zone and are located at the edge of some continents. Locations of volcanoes, mountains, and earthquakes are related to plate tectonic boundaries. Agree or disagree? The correct answer is agree because when the earthquake occurs, the epicenter of the earthquake will develop mountain ranges. Volcanoes and earthquake both result from the movement of plate tectonics. A guide question last time was given on how are earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain belts distributed in relation to the location of the tectonic plates and their boundaries. If you have an answer just like this, then that would be correct. And the answer should be, a large majority of earthquake epicenters, volcanoes, and mountain belts are found near or along the boundaries or edges between two tectonic plates. Rarely you can find these features at the center of the plates. Task 1 and 2 further shows that earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain belts are related to each other because all of them follow the same pattern. They mostly occur near or along the boundaries of the tectonic plates. So class, based from the previous task given, were you able to perform well? Were you able to get the correct answer? If you did well, congratulations! Our key concepts to be developed today is still the same as of the previous video. That is to discuss the overview of plate tectonic theory. Today's objective, recall the basic information on the layers of the earth, locate the major and minor tectonic plates on the map, demonstrate critical thinking and personal discipline in completing the given task. 
Earth is our only home, but did you ever think about what our home is made of? It is 6,400 kilometers from surface to center, but what makes up those kilometers of Earth? Today, we will be learning about the layers of the Earth. Starting at the center, Earth is composed of four distinct layers. They are from deepest to shallowest, the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Except for the crust, no one has ever explored these layers in person. Inner Core This solid metal ball has a radius of 1,220 kilometers or 758 miles or about three quarters that of the moon. It's located some 6,400 to 5,180 kilometers or 4,000 to 3,220 miles beneath Earth's surface. Extremely dense, it's made mostly of iron and nickel. The inner core is also intensely hot. Temperatures sizzle at 5,400 degrees Celsius or 9,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost as hot as the surface of the sun. Pressures here are immense, over 3 million times greater than on Earth's surface. Outer Core This part of the core is also made from iron and nickel, just in liquid form. It sits some 5,180 to 2,880 kilometers or 3,220 to 1,790 miles below the surface. The outer core is responsible for Earth's magnetic field. As Earth spins on its axis, the iron inside the liquid outer core moves around. The mantle is Earth's thickest layer, at close to 3,000 kilometers or 1,865 miles thick. It starts a mere 30 kilometers or 18.6 miles beneath the surface. Made mostly of iron, magnesium, and silicon, it is dense, hot, and semi-solid layer below it. This one also circulates and moves slowly. Near its upper edges, somewhere between about 100 and 200 kilometers or 62 to 124 miles underground, the mantle's temperature reaches the melting point of rock. Indeed, it forms a layer of partially melted rock known as the Athenosphere. The mantle's outermost zone is relatively cool and rigid. It behaves more like the crust above it. Together, this uppermost part of the mantle layer and the crust are known as the lithosphere. Earth's crust is like the shell of a hard-boiled egg. It is extremely thin, cold, and brittle compared to what lies below it. The crust is made of relatively light elements, especially silica, aluminum, and oxygen. It's also highly variable in its thickness. Under the ocean, in Hawaiian Island, it may be as little as 5 kilometers or 3.1 miles thick. Beneath the continents, the crust may be 30 to 70 kilometers or 18.6 to 43.5 miles thick. Along with the upper zone of the mantle, the crust is broken into big pieces like a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. These are known as tectonic plates. The mantle is further divided into three parts, uppermost solid mantle, asthenosphere, and the lower mantle called mesosphere. The uppermost solid mantle is rigid but the asthenosphere has some plasticity, meaning it is solid but it's partially melted and therefore flows very slowly like a liquid. Although the uppermost mantle is of different composition from the crust, together they form a mechanical layer called the lithosphere. The major concept explained by the plate tectonic theory is that the Earth's lithosphere is fragmented into several segments called tectonic plates. These tectonic plates are floating above the asthenosphere which has a fluid-like nature. Each lithospheric segment share borders with other plates. We call these borders tectonic plate boundaries. 
The theory of plate tectonics explains how earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain belts are formed. In fact, it predicts that most of the tectonic activities should occur near or along the boundaries between tectonic plates. All the scientists had to do was plot out where these activities occur and collectively they trace out the boundaries. Recently, modern technologies like Global Positioning System or the GPS and satellites are able to confirm the locations of the borders of these plates by observing the slight movement of the plates. The biggest segments of the Earth's lithosphere are called the seven major tectonic plates. These are 1. African Plate, 2. Eurasian Plate, 3. Australian Plate, 4. North American Plate, 5. South American Plate, 6. Antarctic Plate, and 7. Pacific Plate. As you can see, the seven major plates were named after an ocean, or continent or a big landmass that is part of the plate with a background in geography research from a world map or help from your parents you should be able to identify these plates easily there are also minor plates that are smaller the location of each is described below one nazca plate the biggest plate in between the south american and pacific plates two Philippine Plates between the Pacific and Eurasian Plates 3. Scotia Plate, a small plate underneath the South American Plate 4. Indian Plate, it includes the subcontinent and country of India 5. Arabian Plate, shares borders with the African, Indian, and Eurasian Plates 6. Cocos Plate, shares border with the Pacific Nazca and North American and Caribbean plates and last seven the Caribbean plate shares borders with the Nazca North American and South American and Cocos plate Do you think you can locate all the seven major and seven minor tectonic plates of the earth on the map? Well, let's give it a try this time, we will locate the seven major plates on the map. 1. African Plate 2. Eurasian Plate 3. Australian Plate 4. North American Plate 5. South American Plate 6. Antarctic Plate And the last one is Pacific Plate once again, these are the seven major plates. After identifying the seven major plates, this time we will identify the seven minor plates on the map. The following are the seven minor plates. Nazca Plate, Philippine Plate, Scotia Plate, Indian Plate, Arabian Plate, Cocos Plate and the last is the Caribbean Plate. So once again, these are the seven minor plates. So these are the seven major and seven minor plates and its location on the map. To sum up everything, we simply discussed the layers of the earth the seven major tectonic plates, the seven minor tectonic plates, their names and location on the map. Time for a quiz! Let's assess your understanding of our lesson. Fill in the blanks. Number one, the Earth's surface has a mechanical layer called the blank. It is made up of the blank and the blank of the mantle. This mechanical layer is floating above the semi-melted layer of the mantle, referred to as the blank. Fill in the blanks. Question number two. The lithosphere is fragmented into several segments called... Fill in the blanks. Question number three. A great majority of earthquake epicenters are found... 
fill in the blank question number four. Most volcanoes are located. Fill in the blanks question number five. Mountain ranges are located. Enumeration question number six. The boundaries between tectonic plates are drawn on the map based on information and data gathered from A, B, C, and D. Give the correct answer. Question number seven. What major and minor plates are near the Philippines? Give the correct answer. Question number eight. On which tectonic plate are majority of the Philippine Islands located? Give the correct answer. Question number nine. Is the Philippine near a tectonic plate boundary? Correct answer, question number 10. What does the answer in question number 9 tell us about earthquakes and volcanoes in the country? Give the correct answer, question 11. Why is this information relevant to us as citizens of the Philippines? So how did you do in our quiz? I'm sure you did great. So let's check your understanding. These are the answers to the questions on sentence completion. The Earth's surface has a mechanical layer called the lithosphere. It is made up of crust and the upper rigid part of the mantle. This mechanical layer is floating about the semi-melted layer of the mantle referred to as a stenosphere. Two. The lithosphere is fragmented into several segments called tectonic plates. 3. A great majority of earthquake epicenters are found near or along the plate boundaries. 4. Most volcanoes are located near or along the plate boundaries. 5. Mountain ranges are located near or along the plate boundaries. 6. The boundaries between tectonic plates are drawn on the map based on the information and data gathered from A. Location of volcanoes B. Distribution of earthquake epicenters C. Location of mountain belts and D. Modern GPS and satellites These are the answers to the following questions Number 7. Eurasian Plate and Philippine Plate Number 8. Eurasian Plate Number 9. Yes Number 10, there are a lot of volcanoes and frequent earthquakes in the country. And number 11, it is relevant because it means that we have to prepare for possible volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. Yes, we did it! We just finished discussing Module 1, Week 1, the Theory of Plate Tectonics. I believe you are ready to take the post-assessment test. Be ready on my next video for it. Good luck! Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and if you're new in this channel, click subscribe to be notified with more videos like this. See you on my next video, goodbye!